following program on Ave Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Hello and welcome to another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a program where we talk about contemporary topics or issues focused on the youth. Now today on the show we are going to talk about the youth engagement of a particular industry that circulates around a lot of stigma and stereotypes and that's the modeling industry. So as far as I know, I've engaged with a lot of young people out there who wants to get involved in this industry, but some things are stopping them from joining this industry. Why? Because one is that they're not aware about what this industry can do for them, the, the future that they hold in this industry, and also basically because of the stereos and stigmas around them and they're scared about what people might think if they join this industry. And partially it could be because they lack self-confidence. Now to talk about this industry we have two expertise and with that I would like to introduce you to Amanda Amarsekar who is not a new face on media I'm pretty sure everyone of us knows you from social media and from the pageants all over and he's Mr. Sri Lanka for Mr. International 2018 and he was also a participant this year for Face of Asia and he was also Mr. Hercules 2022 and he's a professional model, model and uh, a part-time digital content creator. Yes ma'am. Amanda, thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the show today. And also we have Sinali Gamage, who is a professional model as well. She is partially new and very young, I would say. And uh, she has taken part in the Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week and also this year's Colombo Fashion Week. Sinali and Amanda, thank you so much for taking your time to join me on the show today. And My pleasure. I'm waiting to hear your experience in this industry. I'm pretty sure that the young people out there also want to get your intake as well. Now, to start off the discussion, when we take the title model, a lot of people just think about, you know, oh, a model is just, you know, looking pretty in front of cameras, you wear different outfits, and that's all you have to do. But in your perspective, what do you think a model means to you, the title? Um, I think... I think at, at your core, right, if you feel that what you like to do and what you are relatively born to do was to dress up and be some sort of iconic symbol of fashion, to say that whether it's a contemporary fashion, whether it's a concurrent fashion, or whether it's an old fashion, or whatever you define fashion to be, then yeah, you can do it. There are certain things and aspects when it comes to modeling that you need to abide by some rules and regulations. But outside of that, I feel that now that the world is opening up and becoming a lot more inclusive, literally everybody can be a model. It's just how you play the game. All right. Sinali, what is your intake on this? I believe a model is somebody who confidently displays themselves with a lot of value because they are showcasing themselves, they are symbolizing themselves through somebody's visualization. So it comes, they come with a lot of responsibility and um, I think a model is someone who you know, covers that entire aspect of somebody's visualization and does justice to it. Right, so what is the best part you enjoy about modeling and being a model? I think it's the overall experience. You know, it's not just standing in front of the camera, it's actually, you know, what goes behind the scenes. Um, you know, uh, the whole hectic environment and how you should, you know, act it out, you know, how to be confident in front of the camera and also to, even if you're in a bad mood, you have to like, get yourself together and just do your thing. That's a good point actually, like even if you're in a bad mood, you should be able to, you know, smile in Definitely. front of the camera. So, Definitely. Amanda, would you like to add on to that? Like, what is the best part for you uh, yeah. in modeling? To, to add to what Sam said, because there's a lot of chaos that goes down. Um, I think one of the more exciting things that I like about modeling is when you're on the ramp, right, and all the cameras are on you, and the lights on you, people are staring, 
if somebody forgets the choreography, how you will then signal to the rest of your team as to who is going to fill in that gap and how you're going to make it seem like it was meant that way. Because sometimes if the three of us are running, she's first, you're second, and I'm third. If I go instead of you, because I forgot that I'm third, how you and her will make it seem like that was a part of the entire tour. And that's a secret only you, her, and myself would know. That I find to be the most interesting part of modeling. That's the most fun. Really? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> but that's, that's kind of pressurizing, don't you think? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it, it, it is that. I think, I think that some people love that pressure and I think unfortunately I'm one of those people that love that pressure. Would you like to agree with him as well? Yes. There we go. <laughs> yes. yes. Satisfaction where you're just, you know, smartly covering it up and just improvising it as you go. I think that's a part of being professional in the industry without showcasing the fear and just, you know, handling it all smoothly. Yeah. And then okay. coming back to and be like, yeah, we did it, we did it, you know, we covered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So Sinali, you're relatively new uh, to this industry. Now, being a girl, like when you joined this industry, how did you feel? Like, what was the environment that you had when you joined? Um, I cannot say that it was daunting. Obviously, I was a bit nervous because uh, no one in my family has modeled before. And whatever that I've seen was on social media. And, you know, I've seen Amanda doing his thing as well. Mm -hmm. And of, it made me pretty much excited. So, um, it was a bit nervous, it was a bit nerve-wracking, but then again, I was confident because it was something that I've always been passionate to pursue one day. Um, so I think the love for it gave me the boost to just, you know, give it a shot. And obviously, I joined uh, Brian Kirkhoven and I got his guidelines as well. And I think I'm super grateful for that because I got a good kickstart, you know. Um, and so far, I haven't faced any, any negative any, any negativity at all, it's all been positive throughout. Okay, that's another important point that you brought up, you know, joining an agency when you have the interest of mm -hmm. joining the model mm -hmm. industry as well. Now, uh, Amanda, what is your intake on this now? When you joined the industry first, now you've had a lot of experience now, I think. <laughs> okay, so when you joined, like what uh, drove you to join this industry and what was your passion? Um, so, modeling to me was a complete fluke. Right? Uh, it was not something I wanted to do ever since I was a small child and I wanted to walk on the ramp. It was nothing. Um, to me, what happened was it was serendipitous that during a similar TV interview like this, where I was the host, I happened to interview my agent. And it was just after that interview where he was like, you have the height, do you want to? And I was like, yeah, okay, cool, that makes sense to me. Um, so that's how I joined in. Um, I think after that, everything just, just seemed to work out. Um, when it comes to passion, since I was working in Sri Lankan Airlines and doing the modeling thing part time, I found life to be, I found it to be a time in my life where either life has to make sense to you or it, or it just absolutely doesn't. And I realized that that was in your control and that I would rather spend the rest of my life doing something I completely love and could devote myself to as opposed to just, what did they say, surviving. So I started asking a lot of my colleagues in Sri Lanka, bro, so the money's good, right? But do you like your job? And not many people could say yes. Right? And I found that if, if that is where I'm going to end up being, what is the point, right? But when I, was, when I, when I walk on the ramp, right? And again, when the, when the lights are on you and the camera and the people are like, <gasps> and you're, you're dressed up in like the coolest clothes and all that, I felt that to be a moment in my life where I felt very alive. And very awake and that is something I'd rather be doing for the rest of my life as opposed to and this is a personal thing but I would rather do that as opposed to saying hi so would you like chicken rice oh with orange juice oh my god um, so <laughs> I, I, I had, it was a point in my life where I had to make a decision and um, I chose this and I'm happier for it so how would you compare that this experience with have you been doing a nine-to-five job prior yes ma'am Okay, so what's the differences that you face? And are you saying that there are no cons in this industry? Uh, there, are, there are cons in everything. Mm -hmm. Literally, there are cons in walking outside on the road. So if you take it that way, there are cons in everything. But, um, so I was working in a 9 to 5 at Avance for about six years. And I liked the fact that being so young, I was getting a lot of money for it, right? But 
I realized that I was very upset. I was, I was very depressed about the throne or everything. I was, I was not satisfied. There was something more I could be doing in life. And I knew that I could be doing something more. Compared to how I felt at my highest high at Abans, mm -hmm. and the highest high I felt when I was doing modeling, one pales in comparison. And the other one I chose to do for the rest of my life. So comparatively, I like this a lot better. So are you happy as to where you are right now? Yes. I feel I could be doing a lot more, mm -hmm. um, especially for the country and to give back to the community. Um, at, at least for the, the modeling industry, give back to them. But I know that in my heart of hearts, I made the right call mm -hmm. to do this as opposed to that. All right. So now when you, when both of you all, when joining the industry, as you all mentioned, there's a lot of sacrifice that you all have to make and maintenance, discipline and all of that. Right. Especially being a girl, you know, people judge. Yes. They criticize yeah. sure. a For lot. Sure. Yeah, and especially, constant. yeah. I mean, being a model, they judge you even more. They look at the slightest things in you, like just if a hair strand is like popping out, they're like, oh, she's not neat. Uh, her body shape is not okay. So now when you join this industry, were you ready for all of this? Um, so before I joined, I did my research. Mm -hmm. You know, I did my research. I, um, I checked a few agencies out. I did my communication and all that. And I knew what I was getting into. And I think that's really important because uh, you have to develop the self-awareness around it rather than going in clueless and not knowing what you're going in for. And that's what I made sure I communicated out with my agent properly. And, um, you know, he gave me a good um, skill set. Like, he made sure that I knew the fundamentals when it came to getting into this industry. You know, when it comes to punctuality, um, your first impression, um, and basically, from makeup to outfit, you know, you should wear this outfit when you're going to for a casting, have a light makeup, all of that. And it's your responsibility to consider all of that and, you know, put it into action. Because it's in your hands. You're representing yourself. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you're the one who's going for a casting, you're the one who's going for a shoot or going on the runway. You're representing yourself. It's not your agent or anyone. You need to make sure that you're taking whatever your mentor or your agent is telling you into your mind. All right, but um, adding on to that point you mentioned, you said that now you need to represent yourself, but yes. when you join an agency mm -hmm. or endorsing a, um, a brand, yeah. you still have to work according to what they tell you and mm -hmm. you have to wear what they give you, look according to the way they want you to look. Yes. So. Would you call that portraying yourself again? Because I feel that you have to change yourself according to what they want you to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being a model, you're basically promoting somebody else's idea mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever they've created, their art. So we need to do justice to them. And obviously, you have to be authentic to yourself, be true to yourself, and do your job properly. But I think it's fair. It's it should be fair from our side to let to just let them have the space to pro, to just give life to whatever they want us to do. That that's our job, and we we can't complain about it. Obviously, we have limitations and boundaries that should be respected. Obviously, um, but then again. I don't look at it in a pessimistic or a negative way because modeling is something that you do for a brand or somebody and it, it, you should do justice to it. Mm -hmm. you shouldn't, I don't think it's right for us to complain, but obviously we have a set of, um, just like I said before, boundaries. And as long as it's within the boundaries and if you're happy about it, then yeah, I, I, it's fine to give consent to it. All right, so coming back to you, Amanda, now you've been in this industry for quite some time and you've portrayed so many different brands and styles and, you know, body types and whatsoever. So was it difficult for you to change from character to character? Uh, at the start, mm -hmm. yeah. See, I think, I think what people get mixed up is because you're supposed to be a model, people tend to differentiate you from being a normal person. A model is as, as normal as anybody else. It's just that you might need to do a skincare routine every once in a while. You might need to go to the gym every once in a while and you just, you're not supposed to overeat. It's not that you can't eat, right? It is that. 
um, I don't think you're doing anybody justice or doing yourself wrong if you, if you look at it that that um, however if you if like like how Sandra said it's somebody else's um, idea that you're bringing to life right so if they have a certain vision for it you need to fit that mm-hmm. and that is only if you're okay with it if you don't want it you don't have to do it nobody's going to keep you at gunpoint yeah. and say oh you're doing it exactly so if you want to do it you might have to fit in their guidelines of that perception of their of their vision so if they want you to look a certain aesthetic you might have to but that is to say that for for any major films for example like Thor and Superman Henry Cavill and and Chris Hemsworth they had to put on the weight right but then you want to be a superhero you can't be oh no it's I'm going to be true to myself and and be the small superhero nobody's going to believe that it is more or less something like that so it's, it's not a huge undertaking that you have to do and it's not that you're being inauthentic to yourself. It's just either you're adding more value to yourself to try and fit in a different aesthetic or you're either taking away from what you have. For example, like how Christian Bale, he lost so much weight to be the mechanic or whatever it is. He, I think dude, he was like 40 kilos. Yeah. I mean, he was just born, right? So it is also, it is, it is that. It's now that you are a model, this is just something you have to do. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. But if you want to and take your game up to the next level, mm-hmm. that's just something you have to do. Totally. Yeah. I think that's where people get modeling wrong with model. Model is it's who you are as a human being and anybody can be. Modeling is just fit in that aesthetic of whatever it is that people are looking for. This is the road you got to go down. All right. So now you've just opened up so many avenues for me to ask follow-up questions. But before, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> before that, let's go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen XYZ and we will be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Amanda Marasekara and Sinali Gamage who are professional models and in the first segment we were talking about you know the modeling industry and their experience in it and I would like to continue this discussion. I think we left off with you Amanda. I think so yeah. And talking about the difficulty of you having to shift from characters. Another follow-up question for that. Now if you want to change your appearance for yourself now let's say you want to dye your hair, you want to get more tattoos or uh, something like that. But do you have to get approval from your agency to do that? Would be the smarter thing to do. Right. Right. Um, so I think it, it varies from agency to agency. Mm-hmm. Whereas some agencies has it stipulated on their contract that says, should you even shave a hair, please let us know. Mm-hmm. Some agencies are a bit more lenient with that and say, I mean, at least keep us informed that you're going to do something like that. Um, but it, that's, yeah, I think it just, it just varies from agency to agency but I don't think that that should restrict you from experimenting as to what you should look like you know if you want to get a tattoo get six but do it right? <laughs> it's, at the end of the day it's, it's your gig it's your body um, and if you want to dye your hair because I think the, the first part of this year my hair was white for yes, reasons I, I still can't remember <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I did that but see if I didn't do that I would know now that that was a bad idea I would still want to do that because the amount of damage it does to your scalp is mad. Um, but I think you should be able to freely experiment like that. And a supportive agency might have you on board because then you are recategorizing yourself as not only this, but as this as well. And then maybe you can work a different angle. And you will know that that is what you want to do until you actually try it. You haven't tried it out. So I think go for it. Hasn't it ever bothered the both of you all that, okay, this is bothering me now. I can't be the way I want. I can't eat what I want. I can't wear what I want. Has it ever bothered? Uh, no? <laughs> Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Because um, I've always been, I've always loved being a bit more fashionable, a bit trendy. So, you know, it's more of my thing uh, to look a bit, a bit extra, um, add in more value, a bit of a, you know, sophisticated touch here and there. I, I don't think I've ever complained as such, but yes, when it comes to, uh, you know, maintaining my physique, it's a constant struggle. You know, I think a lot of, young girls not even girls but you know both um, men and women boys and girls would relate to it you know having a struggle with your self image um, 
that's obviously it's there but then again i haven't really complained about it because i've always loved to be a bit trendy and a bit stylish okay yeah. is it the same with you amanda um some i think i think the problem that people have chanel is we want to look a certain way to certain people so we want to alter their perception of us right so what we're always looking for is that external validation as opposed to you being comfortable with who you are the second the second i realized that um is when i realized that i didn't have to be as extra as i thought i had to be to gain the external validation of everybody else so i stopped the 17 rings and the earrings and the dyed hair and all that um i tore it down a lot within this year but that was because it dawned on me that that is not who i am but then to say to say that I don't like attention is a lie. It's an absolute lie. I think every model, every model has a bit of ego. They want everybody wants to be loved. That's why we do it. It's low key. Yeah, hey, can't really talk too much about. Oh man, you don't see me. Oh, that's so true. Um, but how much you want to push yourself? I think that all comes down to how much you really want it. And if you're completely happy by your own peace of mind as to how you look and feel, you're okay. If you feel that you are extra and you want to be extra, by all means, go for it. Right, but if you're doing that for somebody else to see you and say, "Oh, he looks so nice," then that's where you go wrong. Right. So you're telling external validation is not important. External validation is the worst thing you can always look for. Mm-hmm. Now, coming back to the career. Now, do you think that this career is a legitimate thing that anyone can follow? Finally, um, I think. um i believe since i've joined a bit recently um i can see that we've come a long way because you know i've been following up i've i've watched senior models uh, do th- do their thing and it's impressive um definitely it's more diverse uh, it's broadened its way up but i think it for it to be a legitimate career we i think we have to go a bit more further um it's always safe to say that you know it's always good to have a plan b have your education first um because it's you you can't do this forever it's it's very it's kind of time framed mm-hmm. so it's always good to just keep the, uh, to keep, to have a plan b by our side just to be on the safe side because you never know okay so have you faced with any of the stereotypes or stigmas from other people when you joined uh, the modeling industry If I said no I'd be lying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course. Um because one because I'm a girl and you know um there's a lot of stereotypes stigmas going around the fact that I'm a girl oh my gosh she might you know she might mess up mm-hmm. um her reputation will go down the drain it's so easy for her to you know um to get down the wrong track yeah. and her exactly. parents would lose control of her yeah. stuff like that. Um but i think one reason that i'm really grateful is that my parents were very supportive because they they knew what i was capable of doing they were like you know you've got the height you've got the confidence why not they were the ones who pushed me they had faith in me since day one but what they told me was your safety is in your hands and it's your responsibility no matter what so therefore make sure you're aware of your environment your atmosphere the people who you're working with who you should say yes to who you should say no to your boundaries and your limitations and i think that's that's a start up that's like the fundamentals you need to engrave in yourself in order to not hear any negativity from anyone because i think anyone would someone would have something to say and i think it's and i think it's really important not to get it too much in your head because you know who you are I know who I am. I know that I haven't done anything wrong and whatever I when it comes to work, I give my 100%. And the set knows it, um the crew knows it and I think you know as long as you're true to yourself and you know your set of ethics, you're good to go. All right. So, was it similar to you as well, Amanda? Is it just for girls or do boys also get this stereotypes and stigmas that affect them? I I I think um guys might face an equal amount of stigma mm-hmm. because like like she said right there's there's a there's a there's an um assumption that if you're a model you're more likely to be a lot more promiscuous with your sexuality and all that you, you yes. either you're sleeping yeah. around a lot or doing all the drugs mm-hmm. or both 
right? Um, so that is not to say that that does not happen. Yeah. Where there's smoke, there's fire, there has to be. That's not to say that everybody does it either, right? Mm -hmm. But you always, you're almost more likely to assume the worst. And when your parents say, Ani, don't do it please, because of this and this and this, I, I know now that they want what's best for you. And that's why they would try to deter you from that. But like she said, if you're sure of who you are and what you're doing, you're completely fine, right? You won't make the wrong call because you know yourself not to make that wrong call. I think um, something I hold very close to heart is when I first started, my mom told me that it was, it's like you're holding poison. As long as there's no cut in your hand, it won't seep in and you won't die, right? But you are still holding poison. You gotta know that. And that was something I always took to heart. So when I had to make a decision or a call about a certain shoot or a show, I would ask first my agent and then everybody else. I would ask there are a couple of other people as well. Do you think this is a good idea? And if I feel after all that, that I still am uncomfortable with it, I wouldn't do it. If I feel that maybe it could be career advancing, I might try to do it. Mm -hmm. But if at all, in my heart of hearts, if I feel that that's the wrong thing for me to be doing, I don't think I'll do it. I think that's a very good example that your mom gave. I'm <laughs> very smart, you know. <laughs> So now when it comes to the industry again, now when you all are modeling, do you happen to have any difficulty of, uh, as I mentioned earlier, changing yourself or um, does it change from agency to agency about your character, about your appearance or whatsoever? How do you choose the right way for a person to move into? Maybe your agency might have some influence mm -hmm. where they're either more restrictive or they're a lot more loving. I don't think we have that in our agency where he's down your throat saying, no, no, you can't do that. I don't think that's the happening. Um, but to say that if you want to redefine yourself and they won't let you do that, um, I, think, I think that might be the wrong way for you to move because I think a model should be one of the most fluid type of people out there. You have to be able to... Bruce Lee is a man. You have to be... A, you're, you're water, right? If they want you to be an athletic model, you have to be that. If they want you to be a high-end fashion model, you have to be that. If they want you to be a very casual street style model, you have to be able to fit in all these roles, right? So if you cannot do that because of a restriction that is um, alien to you, that is not your own, then that's a call you need to make as a model whether you want to pursue a, f a future in that agency or not. But be that as it may, if you feel that you need to venture down a certain avenue to experience a new side of life, I think you should try it. As long as it's not detrimental to your health and doesn't come at the cost of something that you cannot, maybe your reputation or something. Yes. Maybe then. But outside of that, go for it. So there's a lot of risk that you all are putting oh, yourself definitely. into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So how would you describe the atmosphere of the modeling industry right now and what the people in Sri Lanka are thinking about this industry because the Gen X is, I feel, people might call it old school. Sri Lanka is full of culture and, you know, it's very rich, very rich, I would right. say. But still, you know, people think very old school. Right. Right. So how can you describe today's context in the modeling industry? From what I can see now, a lot of our designers are embracing our culture into, into their work. Mm -hmm. Every piece of clothing or every concept they involve, it has a Sri Lankan culture in it. There's an essence. And I think that's something that um, they should be raised aware of because they appreciate it. It's not like they completely cut it off and make it all westernized or anything like that. They involve a part of our, of our roots in their work. I've seen it um, in many occasions, especially when it comes to fashion weeks and stuff. And... Um, Obviously, we have to revolutionize because, you know, technology is developing and, you know, society is we're evolving and there's nothing wrong in it. It's literally inevitable. We cannot complain about it. And I think we should, you know, kind of divert ourselves from that aspect where, you know, evolving is wrong because it's inevitable. And I think um, our generation, generations to come, they're very, very broad the knowledge they possess is immense and I don't think that it's right to underestimate it even when it comes to the fashion industry per se it's it's amazing it's di it's 
diversified to a whole other level. And I think it should be appreciated, it should be admired, because it's ideas, it's visions. That's that that vision. I don't think a lot of people have that have that skill to come up with such a vision and just give it out to the audience. It's something right. to be appreciated for. Okay, Amanda, how can you describe the mindsets of people right now thinking about the modeling industry? Are they very accepting in the I, I want to say it's 2020 and mm. people have changed. That being said, um, like somebody said, there are some very myopic people out there who believe that tradition should be held up and culture should be above everything else. And even if you shake it slightly, you're, you're doing something blasphemous mm. and you're bringing down the entire country. <laughs> How dare you? Whereas... Like she said again, um, a lot of designers I know, they just want to make Sri Lanka known in the world. And the only way you can do that is by showcasing the culture in the clothes. That's literally what they're doing, right? But it, it is sad to believe that people would not let that happen and would rather tarnish the reputation of somebody who's trying to do that. Whereas they themselves aren't doing squat diddly anything. Right, um, so that is that is always going to be one of these things. However, I think what we should also understand is change is inevitable, like Sandy said, and either you get with the program, or you're going to be left behind. And for Sri Lanka to move forward, we need to get with the program. So I think change should happen. All right. So I think we've come to the end of our second segment also. So before we come to our third, let's go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen X Rising, and we'll be back soon. back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Amanda Amarasekar and Sinali Gamage and this is our last segment. Now to start off this segment, the big question I want to ask is appearance and how you look. That's the main thing about you know being a model and how you portray yourself and that's the first impression that people get about you as well. Now the young people out there who wants to join this industry, they are thinking okay, I don't think I'm capable of this, of looking like a certain person. Do I look like myself? Is there something that I have to maintain even more like physicality wise? Um, how do you go about that? Is there like a certain um, rules that you all have to follow in order to maintain a good physique? Would you call it rules? I don't, I think it's, it's maybe mandatory. a checklist. It's mandatory. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think what happens is um, I think after you do it, like after you go to gym a couple of times, and after you start eating healthy, I cannot eat too much sweets as I used to when I was ugh, like when I was growing up, and I cannot eat too much of the whole oil. It's not that I can't eat pizza. It's just I, your I, consumption I, level has yeah, gone I think down. It drops. Yeah. So I think what happens is it, it transforms into a lifestyle, mm -hmm. and the second it goes there, it's like it's like how you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you don't do it, you're an absolute pig. But <laughs> that is also said that that is how you grow up, right? So you know that, okay, so, so I get up in the morning, I drink some water, I do this, I do this, I do this. I think that becomes a part of life. where you get up in the morning, you do this, then you wash your face with the face cream and all that stuff. And before you go to sleep, you do that. And before you go out, you do this. I think it just becomes that. And then it comes to a point where now, if I don't go to gym, I get so sad. Yes. Like I am at zero age level, I'm like, oh, I can't do anything, man. But that gym is my dopamine release. I, I need that now. And, and it, it just so happens that it works out good for the modeling thing. Exactly. I think it's a very progressive. I, th I think at the end of the day, it's just a lifestyle change. And that is what it is to me. What is it to you? I mean, it appears as a sacrifice in the beginning. Like, you know, you, it's like a commitment to go to gym, eat healthy. But at the end of the day, just like Amanda said, it becomes a part of your lifestyle. You can't really get out of it. Just like he said, if I don't go to gym, I feel so low. Because when I, when I go to gym, have a good killer workout, I feel amazing about myself. Because right. I'm like, yes, I'm stronger than yesterday. I feel great and you know, I look better. And it's, it's the commitment that I put in myself and my work. And I think it's something that we should respect ourselves for. Because it, 
it's it's a hard it's a hard point like it it's it's a really hard start up to start it's always difficult and i remember when i started off i wasn't always skinny i i grew up as a i was obese i was overweight and i remember the the starting point was so difficult and when i look back at it i'm so proud of myself because this is what i envisioned so um it's not something to complain about and if you want it if you want if you want to start up in this industry or whatever you need to you need to put in the work without complaining like get into it do you think that anybody can become a model if they have the passion to do so or is there a certain way that you know a person should be naturally gifted with certain aspects hmm. um, um so it depends on what category of model you want to fit into mm-hmm. right because there are some people who want to be um, aesthetic models or like athletic models and the whole lifestyle model and all that if you have the proper build for that sure um some people want to be ramp models but if you don't have the height it's harder it's not that it's impossible it's harder because there are certain requirements you need to meet and that's not that's not shaming anybody to say oh you're short it's not to say that it's just that when a designer makes a garment they want it to flow it's a requirement basically yeah and and that that flow is what gives that garment its elegance and for that to be carried off you at least you need to be a certain height is what they're saying so it's not to discriminate and like say people to tell the people that you can't because nowadays i mean if you check social media everybody's a model mm. right so it's hard to exclude people saying oh well you're not a model because you didn't meet this criteria but um i think it's how you distinguish that phrase it's how it's segmented basically yeah i think it's there's segmented. like there's no fixed category of being a model there's definitely a wide variety of segments yeah. that not anymore at that least. needs that has a few requirements to be met yeah. here and there yeah and second you meet that you got to go yeah so as a young person if somebody wants to join this industry what's the first step that they need to take oh what do you think it is i think to mentally prepare yourself because it's not like you, you can be rejected first hand you know i remember i applied for a few agencies i didn't get a response but i was like you know i i want to do this you know i'm i'm going to try until i get a response so mentally be prepared because it's not like you're going to get a shot at first sight and um reach out to the right people don't go around the bush because you know there's a fine line of you being at risk of danger or whatever and being fooled um i think going to the right person doing your research is like the fundamental steps to take at first hand All right. Amanda, what do you think about that? So once you do your research, what uh, what next? I think um okay, yeah. So so what she said was absolutely right. You need to you need to know that once you get into this thing, you might get rejected 100 times. Yes. Literally 100 times before you actually get your first gig even. And that can be the smallest shot ever. Um but once you do that and you do your research and talk to people in the industry, I think the best thing you can do to give yourself a chance in this day and age is to build your social media profiles yes because now how companies hire is as long as you have a healthy following mm. that they can get some mileage off of they will use you as a model that's that's because once you repost your picture with their clothes or whatever it is on your feed they get that entire thing off them so now if you've worked some sort of good social media game then you're good to go right um but outside of that dude i think what she said is right you need to find out what part of modeling you need to fit into or you want to fit into and just work your way through that you should be all right all right another point that you mentioned was maintaining your public profile on social media now when it comes to that i believe that now being a model you have to maintain a certain level of transparency as well of being who you are or what you portray on social media so amanda i've seen your videos as well you're a content creator and I feel that you're portraying yourself most of the time most of there. The time. Right. And uh, how do you have that balance where you portray professionalism and also being yourself? Um again, it comes back to the fluidity of the term model. So when you're working at least to me, when I'm employed as a model to work a gig, I'm an actor. right so if i'm doing commercial for coca cola if i'm doing commercial something else or pizza or something else i would be that guy i'm i'm the guy on the fourth chair wearing the red shirt enjoying a slice of pizza with his friends over christmas that is me there 
Personally, if I'm not the biggest fan of pizza, I wouldn't endorse it. Because I feel that the people who watch TV commercials and the people who follow me from my social media feed are two different segments. Mm. I'm trying to be as authentic as I can in my social medias as opposed to the world of acting. Because should I have a gig where I'm in a movie and the movie entails that I'm supposed to drink this beverage or say this certain thing, and if I say, well, my values don't really appreciate that, then they're like, okay, fine, you can bugger up, we'll get somebody else. That is not you being professional as an actor. However, in your social media following, if you say, this is what I take on a daily basis. You have to mark your words. And you're not. And when you get exposed to doing that, like I think one of the more famous influencers or social media content creators, his name is The Liver King. I think he got exposed by saying that he was all lean and now we found, we found out that he's taking, I think, steroids and all sorts of enhancers. The fact that he went on so many um, TV shows like this and interviews and, and insisted that he was clean and now got found out to be not makes it look a lot worse than if he had at the start to say, no, I don't take any. Or I just came out and said, yeah, yeah, I take some. I take a couple, man. Otherwise, you can't look like this. Mm. So it is, that, it is that differentiation between you as an actor and you as a social media content creator. Or you as a social media person. Or you as a human being. Mm. On your social medias, at least to mine, I try to stay as true as I can to what brands I endorse and represent. That is how I draw that line. So now, considering the current context, how would you describe... Uh, how is Sri Lanka faring in this modeling industry compared to the international levels? And would you advise anyone who's interested in taking part or joining this agency to do so at this moment? Um, I think if you've always had like um, an ambition to start up modeling and you know try it out, then yes, it's definitely you know try it out here. It's some you know it's a good startup. It's a it's a good beginning, but when it, if I have to compare the international level and here, obviously, I have to be honest, we have, we have somewhat of a long way to go, right? Because um, I think when it comes to innovation, um, it could be improved, but obviously we are, we are taking, I, I believe we are taking the necessary steps with time um, to come to get there. But I think with patience and with time, we will somehow get there. But I think it's too far stretched to ha make that comparison yet. All right, Amanda, would you agree on Sinali on this as well? Um, I think so. I think I think Sri Lanka is getting there. Mm -hmm. We are a lot more progressive than we used to be, um, but I think we still have quite a while to go before we get to the international level at least. Okay, so again, coming back to appearance-wise, it's something that you all have to maintain. Uh, every day, basically, mm. on a daily basis. So, but still, there are people criticizing of the way you look, or what you wear, of of the styles that you all want to follow, and so on. So, how do you deal with this criticism? Because this is something that can personally put a person down, like mentally. So, being a model, having a public uh, figure, being a public figure, how do you maintain yourself by that, and how do you overcome criticism? Well, I'd like Amanda to answer <laughs> because you know he's been here for a long while. So it it used to be that I felt that people who disagree with you on social media wanted to have a discussion and trying to ration out ideas. What I found out to my detriment was that people would just want to throw things at you just because they themselves either don't feel too secure or they themselves are hurt. You trying to make logic and trying to make people understand all that is it's a waste of your time, essentially. So what I do now is, should I get any form, even the slightest form of social media hate, and not constructive criticism, because there's a clear line between the two, any form of hate, I, I immediately just get rid of it. Because uh. the second you try and make it a thing, it actually becomes a thing, right? The, the second you try and try and justify why they're saying this and maybe it's your fault and something on that line, you give it more life. And that, that seed will plant and it'll root up and it'll, it'll bloom in the worst time in the middle of a show. You're like, that guy said something about this side of my face. Oh, I should show it that time. That's the worst thing you can yeah, do. Second guess yourself. Sure. So I start, started blocking everybody. Anything and everything that you might say to me at that time. Because I 
chose not to associate that negativity with me. And now that I've done that, it's a lot more freeing. All right. Now, coming back to the industry now, you all have to work with other models as well, when, specifically when you all join an agency. Now, down the line, basically everyone faces themselves in competition also, right? But still, you have to maintain that relationship with them so that you can be in the industry and work without having any drama, per se. Because I believe the modeling industry is known for having a lot of drama within the agencies itself. So how do you balance that competitiveness with your colleagues, but also maintain that relationship with them? Has it ever been difficult? Um, personally, no. I've worked with other models from other agencies and um, I think it's how, as long as we don't make the agencies, oh, you are oh, yeah, from another agency, I, I don't want to talk to you, sort of thing, no. I think we all keep that friendly ripple with each other, which is really crucial because at the end of the day you'll be working with that person for a few hours. Yes. You need to have that chemistry with he, with he or she and it's critical. and. You know, I look, I look at her professionally. You know, she's my colleague. Um, I need to do justice for the brand. We have to be professional. Even if we have a grudge with each other, we can't show that. Because um, that's not, it's, it's not a part of, uh, it's, not, it's, it's not fair for the brand or whoever who we're working for. Um, so far, I haven't really encountered any negativity. I'm friendly with every model, even when I went for Fashion Week and all that amazing experiences everyone's friendly um, and also since I'm new a lot of the senior models they've taught me a lot of things they've given me a lot of tips and tricks um, you know I've, I've enjoyed every bit of it super grateful so Amanda being the senior what do you have to say about that I think um, competition wise the best thing you can do is to not take it personally so for example like the three of us were competing for a role mm -hmm. and you got it and we didn't. My getting angry at you and saying they're favoring you and that's why you got it and, and making more and more justifications as to why you were as opposed to me, A puts, that, that's me putting myself down, saying that I, I can't match up to that. And, and B, I am now forming a reason not to, not to associate you and not to hang out with you and, and just, just to get angry for no reason, right? So if, I can take away the personal feeling and understand that it is just a job. And if it's you this time, it's me next time. And if it's not me next time, it's a me time after mm, that. Yeah. But the second you stop taking it very personally, this job becomes a lot more free. It becomes a lot more friendly. Because right? the second you start, you start making things up in your mind, saying he got it because they're, they're exactly. doing this with this person and this, exactly. this company is doing them favors then you start becoming a very negative person. And I, I have met negative people in my life and I try not to be that. It's like mm -hmm. you start seeing everyone and everything as a threat as to you. Enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's so toxic. Terrible way to live life. So toxic, yeah. yes. That's definitely right. So I think we've come to the end of our final segment as well as my final question. In short, if you can give some advice to the viewers out there for the young models who want to join the modeling industry also, what advice would you give them now? Because as you said, the competition and what people might say really affects their morality, you know, and they, they really go down mentally. So what motivational advice can you give them to just follow their passion and dream and go ahead with this? Um, quote unquote, what will people say has killed so many dreams. It pulls back people from doing what they really want. And I think, you know, we've, we've come to a point today where we can be true to ourselves, we can be authentic. And therefore, if you want to do something, you do you. At the end of the day, you live once. You're not going to get another chance. You, the opportunity you've been provided won't be provided to somebody else and they would have definitely, you know, gone for it. So. If you want to get somewhere, if you want to, if you want to start up modeling you know, or in the fashion industry as a designer or anything, start. Don't think twice, don't hesitate. Start, do your research, develop self-awareness, be mindful of the pros and cons, talk to the right people and just go for it. And it's critical for you to be confident, love yourself no matter what. It's, it's a struggle, but work on yourself because it, there, there won't be stopping. Like working on yourself every single day, it's 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 a must. Right. Yeah, Amanda. 
I don't think I can top that. I think that's very, very, <laughs> very eloquently said. Um, on top of that, man, look, you, you'll find out that at the end of the day, this is an industry, and every industry has its pros and cons. Um, people know, will start making um, accusations and uh, assumptions about you, if you already take that on. There's an entire world to be experienced, and, and we love that world, right? We sincerely enjoy it, which is why we're still here. Yes. If that's something you want to do, go for it. All right. Again, thank you, Sinali and Amanda, for sharing your expertise, knowledge in the modeling industry and your experience as well. I believe that the viewers who are watching this would have got a very good idea and had some idea about you know, the modeling industry, but still, they have a long way to go. And again, thank you very much for thank this. You so much thank you so us. much for having us. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ. This week, we will be back again next week with another topic or issue relating to the youth. Just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night.